Hey guys, and welcome to CS50 Problem Set 1 Cash. Alright, so this is actually one of the simplest problem sets, so let's get right into it. So, this problem set assumes that there are only four coin values 25 cents, 10 cents, 5 cents, and 1 cent. Alright? So, the aim of this program basically is that the user has to input a dollar amount, and then we have to tell the user, the program has to tell the user, what is the minimum number of coins they would need to make that dollar amount? All right, so that might not be so clear, so let's just jump into an example. So let's say they need 0 0.43 dollars, and we know that that's 43 cents, right? So the number of 25 cent coins needed is 1, right? And the remainder will be 43 minus 25, which is 18. And now how many 10 cent coins do we need? Well, we need one. And the remainder would be 18 minus 10, which is eight, so eight cents left. So how many five cent coins do we need? Well, we need one, right? So the remainder would be eight minus five, which is three. And now how many one cent coins do we need? Well, we would need three one cent coins to make three cents, so it's three. And the remainder would finally be zero. So, how many coins do we need in total to make $0.43, which is what the user inputs? 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 3. So we need a total of 6 coins. So the aim of this program is when the user inputs a number, a dollar, like let's say $0.43, what the program needs to give out is 6, right? Which is the minimum number of coins it takes to make up that number. All right, so hope that makes sense. So let's jump, let's jump right into the program. Alright, so first of all, what we do in any program is we include this, the normal libraries, which is standardio.h as well as cs50.h. Alright, and then we go ahead and start the program, int main void, and hopefully you're, you know by now that that's the equivalent of when green flag clicked on scratch. Right, so the first step in the program is actually to get user input, right? Because we need some input, like we need the dollar amount. So let's make a variable, call it dollar, uh, dollar equals, and remember how we get some user input? It's in the get function, right? Except in this case, we want to get something, but we don't want to get an integer. We want to get a number, but an integer is a whole number. What we want to get is a format that allows us to also take decimals, right? So instead of get int, we're going to use get float, which just allows us to take in decimals as well. So let's say get float, let's say enter your change. Alright, so we prompt the user for some input. But now, similar to Mario, we don't want to just do this once. We want to keep on doing it as long as if they input a negative number, we don't want to accept that, right? Which means we need to keep on doing this, we need to keep on asking them to enter their change while it's a negative number, because we only want positive numbers, right? So for that, we can use a do while loop, which basically means do the following while. So do this. while dollar is less than or equal to zero, right? And now we just need to tell the computer that dollar is a float. So just float dollar, just to inform the computer. All right, so now we get some user input, right? But the user is inputting it in dollars, whereas we want to work in cents, correct? Because our currency is in cents. So, our denomination is in sense, sorry. So, uh, what we need to do is int sense, because now sense, there's no decimal points, it's straight up, it's straight, it's a whole number. So, in sense equals to dollar times 100, right? Simple math. But, there's some, um, some sort of inefficiencies in the computer, some inaccuracies rather, that make it such that it'll not be exactly accurate if we just tell to multiply by 100. So, for this, we'll need to use a round function. All right, so we need to use in cents equals round dollar times 100. And this round function is actually not within these two libraries, but a new library called math.h. And you wouldn't know this, it's not like general knowledge, it's not common sense. You would need to know this from the walkthrough itself. So include math.h, and this allows us to use the round function. All right, so just round cents into dollars. And next, we also need another variable 
because we want to count the number of coins, right? So let's just say int coins equals zero. All right, I don't forget your semicolons. So what do we want to do really? We need some kind of loop, right? Because we because we need to know how many coins are there, and we need to keep on subtracting the amount. So let's say it was forty three cents, right? We need to keep on subtracting like forty three minus twenty five. Then the remainder we needed to minus ten. The remainder we needed to minus five, right? So we know that it involves some kind of loop. So for this, we can use a while loop. All right, and it's very, very simple. The logic is very simple. So while cents is greater than or equal to 25, right? Cents equals cents minus 25. So it's very, very simple. As long as cents is greater than or equal to 25, minus 25 from it. So 43, let's say it's 43, that's greater than 25. So do 43 minus 25, right? That's all this means. Cents equals cents minus 25. We're updating the value of cents. Now, all right, so cents equals cents minus 25, coins plus plus, which basically means add a coin every time this function is done, all right? So now that we have that, I don't forget a semicolons as well. Now, a simpler way to write this, and it has the exact same functionality, no need to worry, just to, for efficiency sake, instead of writing cents equals cents minus 25, we can simply write cents minus equal to 25, right? It has the exact same functionality, everything is the same, it's just for beauty of the code, right? Just to make everything more simple for us to type, all right? No, no other function, all right? So, while cents greater than or equal to 25, minus 25 from cents and add a coin. All right, remember coin starts at zero. So logically we can kind of think of the next step which is while cents is greater than or equal to 10, cents minus equal to 10, sorry, cents minus equal to 10, which basically means, um, which basically means every time cents is greater than 10, Subtract 10 from the number of cents and add a coin, coins plus plus. So it really is that simple, right? So now let's just continue on for the other uh, denominations as well. While well, cents greater than or equal to 5, cents minus equal to 5. Sorry, don't forget your semicolons, guys. All right. Coins plus plus, right? So it's just counter. And finally, you can guess what the last one is. While cents greater than equal to one, cents minus equal to one, coins plus plus. Right, so I hope everything makes sense so far. It's very logical, it's very simple, right? There's not much thought that you need to give to it. Right? The only mistake that we could possibly make here is forgetting a semicolon because that could mess everything up, right? So, now finally, remember what we need to output is the number of coins, right? So this counts the number of coins. Now all we need to do is print the number of coins that this program has counted. So all we need to do is printf you will need at least percent i as the placeholder, percent i is the placeholder for an, for an integer, because the number of coins will be an integer, you will need at least percent i coins. Alright? And we want the variable, we want percent i to come from the variable called coins, which is this one. Alright? That's it. That's, it. It's literally that simple. Now let's try to make cache. Okay, no errors at all. Dot slash cache enter your change 0 0.43 let's say you will need at least six coins all right and if you see that matches with what we did here now we can just try other things as well let's say oh let's put a new line just for clarity right backslash n to create a new line let's make cache again dot slash cache enter your change let's say 0 0.25 it should give us one all right you will need at least one coin so it's that simple guys um this is one of the simplest problem sets in the entire course i would say 
Um, so make sure to subscribe because I'm going to be doing every single problem set for this course and make sure to leave a like on this video if it was helpful. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. And yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Bye David.